it was hard <laughs> to get uh, a, a real a reaction about why people are... But, but I, I did my due diligence on, on the book. Uh, and uh, the book was called Get a Life. And, um, and I, you know, I met people. I met a guy who was um, um, psychotically shot. He couldn't speak two words together. He was so shot. But he had a cat with him. And he dressed the cat up in a captain's uniform. <laughs> and when he had the cat with him, he was totally verbal. He could speak nonstop. In fact, it was difficult to get him to shut up. <laughs> Take the cat away, he couldn't speak. Interesting. Um, I, I met a lady who had multiple personalities. And all of them started. <laughs> so this voice would come out of her little spot and very wise. And then she got wild, and she was Captain Kirk. <laughs> but interesting character. So I finally came to the conclusion in the book that you're here to see each other. Then I decided to make a, a documentary. Years later, I, I, I made a documentary, which I also called Get a Life. And I tried to do the same thing, the same due diligence, examination of people uh, as to why they're there. But this time it was on camera. And it was then that I discovered the truth of why we're all here. And that is, it's mythological. We're here celebrating a mythology. Mythology tries to answer uh, questions that have no answer. Uh, try to give an explanation to questions that have no answer. And from early times, um, the Greeks in their mythology, they would discover large bones that we now know were our dinosaur bones. But they had no explanation to these giant bones. Where did they go on? So they made up a whole mythology of giants behind that mountain and war with the demigods and all. They had a whole thing going trying to explain the inexplicable. What we're doing here is visiting the same thing with mythology. What's out there? And what does it all mean? And what's the future going to be? And what's the world going to look like? And how are we at them? And if we met an alien, what would it... So all this mythology goes on. And the ritual of mythology, like religion, the ritual of mythology, you come here and you visit with the people you love and, and, and you get uh, uh, autographs and pictures and we're indulging in a ritual of mythology. And that's what we're doing here. Celebrating the unknown. Star Trek that I like the most? Changed your that, life. Changed I can't your make it that word. I'm getting Teamster. That can't be right. <laughs> what, what, what's that word? Changed. What changed my life the most about Star Trek? Have I got it? If it weren't for Star Trek, I wouldn't be here today. I'd be somewhere else, and that's changed my life completely. <laughs> Old Town Sacramento is a place you've got to come and see. <laughs> that's pandering, and that won't happen again. <laughs> What's 
changed my life the most. My goodness. Um, I went, uh, I, I was popular on, when Star Trek was on the air and then it went off the air. And uh, due to a number of personal reasons that some of you have read about and must know that I didn't have any money and, uh, and I, was, I was really, I was, I was totally broke. Uh, after Star Trek, and and I had to struggle, start again, and work my way back into whatever, I, and it was a struggle. But because Star Trek gave me a popularity, which we call celebrity, I had this thing called celebrity, which then uh, was uh, was useful to get me other things that finally resulted in my being here this afternoon and. And entertaining you and, and having a good time with you. So that uh, is, uh, Star Trek has changed my life completely. Okay. Thank you. I won some awards, I got some time. It was great. And, and I live in the San Fernando Valley. And the studio was way below LAX. So those of you who've been to Los Angeles know that when you go up to 405, <laughs> first of all, you've got to get so early in the morning. Then you've got to get back. In the, and you, if, the, if my call was before 5 o'clock in the morning, I could make it uh, all right. If my... If uh, my release uh, uh, when I was out of, uh, out of the studio after 8, 9 o'clock in the evening, I was okay. But if my call happened anywhere in between then, it was a two-hour commute. So that began to pray, two hours each way. So that's a four-hour commute. And I know many of you do the same thing, have long commutes. It is the most trying thing known to man. That locked up traffic is just debilitating. So when the show was over, uh, I, I was both uh, enormously, I, I was in grief because it, it was such a good show. I, I love so many people on it, the great writers that we had. But there's an element of a sigh of relief, especially when the following year or two, I did another a comedy uh, at Warner Brothers, and I could write a bike to the studio for my house. And, and unfortunately, that show was canceled after a year, but uh, I, I, that's a condition, really. From now on, 
I'm not going down below uh, LAX ever again. <laughs> uh, that's uh, one of the things I meant to. Anyway, so doing Boston Legal was, was great fun. And again, brought me a, a certain amount of, of a celebrity. Listen, everybody, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so sad to leave you. I'm going to be, I'm supposed to go, but I, I'm, upon request, I'm going to go down and be at my autograph thing and I'll sign some autographs for a short while. And if you want to come by, I'd be delighted to sign. So thank you very much.